Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Eden Outpost. Most of the people, they are ignorant about sourdough uh, bread. And most of them, they'll quote the quotation in councils on that, where Ellen White says that the bread should be sweet and there should not be any sourness. Was she referring to sourdough? Is sourdough classified under uh, something that we should not eat? Uh, let's find out what this is all about and let us learn more from this video as Barbara O'Neill is going to explain. Oh, we have had this question a lot about fermented foods. Again, um, some of our doctors will say that it's not good because it's a result of sin. Fermentation is a result of sin. Um, they class kimchi, sourdough, miso in the same category as apple cider vinegar or wine. So what are your thoughts on that, Barbara? And are there any differences between wine and apple cider vinegar and kimchi and all these other fermented or cultured foods? Well, we know that wine must never be touched. We know that the alcohol kills brain cells and God has said not to touch it. And I don't, and I certainly appreciate what the Bible says about that. Apple cider vinegar, I don't have either. It is one stage short of alcohol. And we all, all have the illustration when the vinegar was given to Jesus, he, he refused it. Now, let me give you the science behind that. The apple cider vinegar is something that's called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is a neurotoxin. And there are five places we can be exposed to acetaldehyde. One is vinegar, another is alcohol. Alcohol breaks down in the liver to acetaldehyde, the neurotoxin. Also, we can be exposed to acetaldehyde from uh, cigarette smoke, from car fumes. And if someone has a yeast, presence in their body and they're eating a lot of a lot of glucose even a lot of fruit then as the yeast feeds on the glucose it gives off acetic acid lactic acid uric acid and alcohol which breaks down in the liver to acetaldehyde so let's have a look for a moment at things like sauerkraut um, kimchi sourdough miso these are cultured foods, and there's a big difference between cultured foods and fermented foods. Ellen White said, bread should be light and sweet, not heavy and sour. And a lot of people have read that and think she's talking about sourdough bread, but not so. Yeast bread yes. was only used from the Industrial Revolution. What's that, late 1800s, early 1920s, 1900s? Do you know what that means, Ellen White? probably ate sourdough bread. Let's have a look what the Bible says about the sourdough bread. And I think it's 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6 where the Bible says, No, you're not, that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. That's your sourdough. You can have a little sourdough culture, put it into a big mix of flour and water and it will leaven the whole lump. And also, you can find this in Luke, in one of Jesus' parables, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a woman that took a little leaven and put it in the meal till it leavened the whole lump. Let's look in the Old Testament and let's have a look at the children of Israel in the desert for 40 years and they were uh, celebrating the Passover once a year and for one week they had to put the leaven out of their homes. I ask you, what was the leaven? The leaven was the sourdough culture. I can imagine all these Israelite women with their little sourdough starter in a little clay bowl going and putting it under a, a bush for a week. And then after a week, they'd come back and put a little bit of flour and water in and revive their culture. Let's have a look at the sourdough bread um, nutritionally. What it does, the sourdough, it breaks down the protein or the gluten in the grain, making it more digestible. So when you eat sourdough bread, you're eating almost like you're eating pre-digested grain. Mm -hmm. That's really the only bread that I eat as a whole. If I do eat bread, it's the sourdough. So what about uh, sauerkraut? 
Well, let's have a look at nutritionally. Sauerkraut is a way of preserving cabbage. And when you have a look at where it's most popular would be in Germany. So in Germany, in the cold winter months of snow where they can't grow any cabbages, I'm sure that by the end of summer and they're harvesting a lot of their cabbages and some of them can be kept in the basement, but some of them are made into sauerkraut where they finely slice it and they rub it and get the juice out. They put a lot of salt on it and little by little it begins to culture. So nutritionally, the sauerkraut is a, is a form of cabbage that has been cultured. And in that culturing process, you've got a production of lactobacillus acidophilus and, and bifidus bacterium, and they are very important for the healthy function of the gastrointestinal tract. Also in the process of culturing the cabbage, the B vitamins are produced. So it's a, you get more B vitamins available in that. And so let's go over to Japan where miso has been made for centuries and they, they would culture the soybean, uh, the rice, the barley. And again, in that miso, it's a cultured food. So when you eat these cultured foods, you're getting some healthy bacteria for your, for your gut. Now, if it's mm -hmm. let go too long, if it's put into maybe a warm environment too warm, then fermentation begins. And when fermentation begins, alcohol's produced. And whenever the person smells or tastes that, they know they, they must discard it. Mm -hmm. That's very true. So you wouldn't recommend apple cider vinegar or wine or cheese, obviously, no. um, or pickles. Pickles can be classed in the same category, right? Well, it depends what the pickles are made with. If you make pickles mm. with salt and water, they can be quite good. If they're made with vinegar, not so. Yes. Very good. I hope that will answer a lot of other people's questions as well about cultured foods.